And let's pray, all of us. God, I thank you for your faithfulness over my life. I bless you because you have been Jesus, just you have been faithful, merciful, Lord, Lord God. That you, uh, you have treated me Lord. as if, oh God, that you have treated us, oh God, as sons. You have, uh, you have treated us, oh God, me as sons. unfairly like by Jesus, giving me mercies position, oh God, when I did not you, deserve Lord. them. You have been by giving good us and, and, and merciful and kind. Us every day. And the loving above all, who gives us, oh God. You cannot deny your nature. You are love. That is how you have been. That is who you have been. You have poured out yourself. And I bless your name, King of Kings. We glorify in this hour. We don't leave us like orphans, oh God. But Let everything that we shall do here, oh God, to your word, oh God, be, be to your you own glory, your to your magnification. Ghost. That Jesus, and, you have been faithful, and, and, oh God, and, and every man, oh God, and to your adoration, oh God. We don't want to be seen. We don't want to be noticed, oh God. Let everything that we shall like do, you, oh God, Master, be for you faithful. and you alone, oh God. King of kings. And if in any way, oh God, well. our hearts may ground us, oh God, to take you have the glory, oh God, you, you have made, made yourself hearts. known, oh God, to us. Our hearts, oh You've made, oh God, yourself Jesus known Christ. to us. And You've make made us, yourself oh God, manifest, oh God, that we may be able to know you, oh God. That we may be able to know it, to walk in your ways, oh God. That you may be able, oh God, to King Jesus, to know Jesus. And allow they may me, be able oh God, to project you, your nature. They may to be able Jesus, to you exalt are, oh God, your name oh God, down here on and reveal oh God, I want who to you be are a custodian to of your presence. That Jesus, of you your glory, oh God. God. So power, I pray oh God. this hour, this afternoon, oh God, as, as you meet us, oh God, in us, do not allow Jesus, them that are here that oh God, live the same way they came. Meet all of us. All of us, let us come out of this place that we may encounter you, Jehovah. People that have been Jesus, that have been, just like David that said, that, that, that are, are hungry when they do and have holy the house of the Lord Jesus. Over. We are glad that to be at your feet, O God, in your house that are going to, to come out of this place and to lift your name on her with a different mentality. We bless your name, we glorify you, be magnified in the name of Jesus Christ. We do pray, trusting, and believing. Amen.
we will make a shout of victory to the Lord. For great is the Lord. Thank you very much. To begin, Pastor Yakichikwaki, come. There is no better place like being in the presence of our God, like being in the house of our Savior, than being experiencing the glory of our God. Why do you leave your friends at home? You come to enjoy this alone. Next Sunday, come with your friend. That they may experience the saving power of God. If you have come, this is your first time, we shall give our offerings. You just, you just walk on the altar and you give your offering. For those who are paying via a pay bill, our pay bill number is 71-20-753. Account name is Teens Church. Account name is Teens Church. So give your offerings, give your tithes in the offerings unto God and to God's work. Let's close our eyes. Mighty Savior, King of, King of Kings, thank you, Lord, for God, you have done it again. You have revived us, Lord God. Lord God, we have experienced your joy in this place, Lord God. Father, bless our lives. Father, bless the works of our hands. Father, bless our guardians. Father, bless our education. For your own glory and honor. It's in the name of and believe. Amen. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. I believe you are all there. So, so let's all read it together. For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord and to teaching and to teaching its decrees and laws in Israel. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 3 to 4. Acts 6, 3 to 4. Acts is in the New Testament. Right after John, I begin to read. Brothers and sisters, Choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them. And we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. Give us our theme text for the season. That's Matthew 7, 24 to 27. We all read, let's all go together. Therefore, for... Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. 25. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it, it had its foundation on the rock. 26. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Then, 27, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a what? A great crash. The theme for the season is foundations. And so that foundation is the base unto which everything is founded. Foundation is what gives any building, what gives our life its strength and stability. Last Sunday, we saw, that the, we saw that the word is a seed. We have sower or farmer. Farmers are those who share the gospel. And so that the, the soil represents those who hear or listen to the word. And last Sunday, we saw, we saw four types of listeners or four types of soils. The first soil is the hard ground. These are those 
whose hearts are very hard. No matter how much the word is sowed in them, the devil comes to steal the word from them. Second soil, the ground, is a rocky ground. These are those who receive the word gladly. But since down there we have, a, we have a rock, the roots don't go down there. After some time, the crop or the seed dies or the word in them dies. The dark soil is a thorny soil or a soil that has weeds. This soil is good. This soil is fertile. But this soil is invested with weeds. And these are those who love the word of God. Those who serve God. Yet in their hearts, they love the things of the world. In fact, the Bible calls them lukewarm. Because they want to serve God, yet in their hearts, their hearts are invested with the love of money. The love of physical is the, the love of their bodies. And the last soil is the good soil. And these are those whose hearts are prepared, whose hearts don't have weeds, whose hearts are fertile. Whenever the word of God is sown into this soil, into their hearts, they receive the word, and the word in them grows, and it matures, and it gives a harvest. It gives a fruit. It gives the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Let's all sit. Today we shall study how to study the word, or methods of studying the word. In Numbers chapter 3, from verse 5, God, in his wisdom, he establishes the Levitical order. Or God appoints the Levites to serve as a priest in his presence. The priests were to do three things before God. The first thing, the priests were to minister before God. By offering sacrifices and hearing the word of God and presenting the needs of the people before God. The second thing, the priests were to teach God's instructions, were to teach the laws of God to the people. The third thing, the priests were to maintain the instruments and the furniture in the tent of meeting. And the same things are happening in the church today. We come before God to offer our sacrifices of praise and of giving. We come to church to learn the word or to teach the word. We come to church to maintain God instruments. The keyboard belongs to God. The guitar belongs to God. The speakers belong to God. The mics belong to God. The chairs belong to God. So when you come to church, those things have to be maintained. That's why the seats have to be arranged. The seats have to be wiped. In Ezra 7.10, we see the priest by the name of Ezra who was in exile. This priest devoted himself in number one, in studying the word. This priest, he put the word in action. This priest taught the word. So this priest did Three things while they were still in exile. As others were doing forced labor, 
This priest was in the synagogues studying the word, doing the word, teaching the word. The same trend we see in the life of Jesus. When Jesus was here on earth, he spent most of his time studying the word, doing the word, teaching the word. Jesus moved from town to town, from Jericho to Bethany to Jerusalem, teaching the word. So we see this trend even in the life of Jesus. The apostles, when they were faced with the challenge in the church, in the church, we had widows who were complaining that their needs were not being met. And Paul said, Instead of us giving food to the widows, let us appoint seven men who are full of the spirit and wisdom. But as for us who are the apostles, our ministry shall be studying the word, teaching the word, and prayer. Prayer and the word. They go hand in in hand. Prayer and the word are twins. Where there is word, prayer is there. Where there is prayer, word is there. And for you to be an effective prayer warrior, you have to have the word in you. For you to be able to understand the word carefully, you have to be a prayerful person. So prayer and word, they go hand in hand. So in the life of Ezra, in the life of Jesus, in the life of the apostles, we see a similarity. Both of them, they studied the word. Both of them, they did the word. Both of them, they taught the word. And all of them, they prayed. And even us, at this time, that is our role as believers and as Christians. We have to study the word. We have to put the word in action. We have to teach the word. And we have to pray. For us to experience the revival we desire, our prayer closet has to be active. And someone will ask me, so Pasi, or so pastor, how can I study the word? And today, I will share five methods on how to study the word. But before, four things are required in your study room. Number one is time. What is time? You as a believer, you as a Christian, you have to set a particular time of studying the word. Most of us have time for Zoom meetings. My daughter from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., she has a time for Zoom classes. She goes home. She has to take care of the younger sister. After that, she has to watch TV. After that, she has to sleep. So, in her busy schedule, she has to set a time for studying the word. At least have one or two hours in a day of studying the word of God. 
if the word of God is food to you, then you have to set a particular time of studying the word. Second thing that you have to have, have a Bible because this is what we are studying. So have a Bible. And as for you, I recommend a physical Bible. I know most of you have Bibles in your, in your phone. And when you're just about to study your Bible, a friend calls you. Hey, by the way, Sheila, twende kutembea. Unafikiria niende, nisiende. When you're just about to do your Bible, somebody sends a meme. Ni meme. In WhatsApp. And you want to see. I can say. <laughs> and it takes away your concentration of studying the word. So I prefer have a physical Bible. If possible, underline your Bible. Bit by bit. Step by step. That thing, have a pen and a notebook. Some of us, even today, you didn't come to church with a, with a pen or a notebook. In your, in your study room, have a pen and a notebook to write the insights that you receive from the word of God. The fourth thing and the last thing that is very important is the twin brother of word, which is prayer. In your study room, you have to begin your study with a prayer. First, make a prayer. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you insights. As you are reading and you feel like praying, pray. When you're about to finish, finish your, your study again, pray. That way, you will have a humble time you will even discover one hour or two hours are less. So, let's see the methods of studying the word of God. The first method is reading book after book or a book by book. The Bible has 66 books. The old has 39 books. The new has 27 books. You can decide. During my study time, I will read from Genesis. I finished. I write insight. I go to Exodus. I study. I finish. I write the insight. The same to Numbers. The same to Malachi. You jump. Begin with Matthew. Read Matthew. Write your insights. Go to Mark. Write your insights. Go to Luke. Write your insights. All the way to Revelation. You study as you write your insights. This method is good. Why? Because you will see how God has worked with his people. You will see how God walked with Abraham. How God walked with David. How God walked with Moses. Book by book. The second one is the word study method. The word study method. This one, you choose a particular word from the Bible. Maybe is the word love. Maybe is the word faith. Maybe is the word forgiveness. And you begin to study that word in the Bible. You write, this word forgive is found in this book and in this verse. Go again, search. Nowadays, you people are blessed. You have internet. You have smartphones. 
The Bibles are in your phones. Write the word love, and then search. It will give you how many times it is found in the Bible. Again, the word forgiveness, write the forgiveness, search. And it will give you how many times, and the verses and the chapters that word is found in. The that method is topical Bible study. This is when you choose a particular topic and you begin to study it. Maybe the topic of forgiveness, sonship, kingship, kingdom, minds. So you choose a topic and you begin to study each topic one by one. The fourth method is the character study. The Bible is full of many characters. Men and women who have walked with God. Men and women who failed in their journey of faith. So, you can choose a character from the Bible. Maybe Adam. And you study Adam until Revelation. You may be Sarai. You choose a character like Sarai. And you study about Sarai. Where is Sarai found in the Bible? You go again to Moses. Again to David. Again to Peter. Again to John. Again to Jesus, you choose a particular character and you study that character very well. When studying a character or somebody in the Bible, put yourself in the shoes of that person. Ask yourself, if it was I, how best could I have done this? If it was I, could I have obeyed the commandment? If it was I, how best could I avoid the temptation? Put yourself in the shoes of that character. The fifth method is called devotional method. This is when you choose a short passage from the scriptures. Okay? In this method, you make the text personal. Okay? So, where there is me, put there your name. If my name is Kidiavai, where there is me, put there who? Kidiavai. If my name is Shayla, where there is me. Put there what? Shayla. So let's go. The spirit of the Lord is on Kidiavai. Because he has not to do on Kidiavai to proclaim goodness to the poor. He has said to Kidiavai to what? To proclaim freedom for the prisoner. And what? Recovery of sight for the blind. To do what? To set the oppressed free. And to what? To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You make the text personal, practical, and what? And possible. Because you will think this Bible ilikuwa inaandikiwa watu wengi wengine. But this Bible was being written for you. So, make text personal, practical, and what? And possible. There are some people, maybe a preacher, like your pastor, who prepares a message to go and teach. No. The word has first to be practical to me as a believer before I speak it to others. My sons and daughters, 
you are highly privileged. You are highly favored. You are highly blessed. Why? Because the Bible is available for us. It's not like the olden days when the Bible or the word of God was only in the hands of priests, in the hands of prophets, in the hands of pastors. Nowadays, the word is available to everyone who wants to know God. This privilege was removed from the priests, was removed from the prophets, and was given to you and to me. People who were seen and clean, people who were seen as dirty, people who were seen as unworthy. By the way, it was only the Levites who had the stone tablets, who had the scriptures. And if a Levite was going to town and he meets a Gentile, me and you, the Levite would go back to where he came from. Because the Jews saw the Gentiles as unclean, as dirty, as unworthy. But God saw us worthy. God saw us loved. God cherished us. And that's why he released his word to us who were Gentiles for us to know him better, for us to experience him better. And this is a privilege to us who were once sin dirty. And that's why we are able to say, God, you reign. God, you do what? You reign. Because God saw us worthy to be in his presence, to know him better. And that's why you live in a blessed generation. My sons and daughters, you are loved. You are cherished. God has called you to be a chosen generation. To be priests in his presence. To offer to him living sacrifices which is our bodies to him. This God loves us so much and he wants us to experience him at a personal level. Let's all stand. Apart from God giving us his word, he also gave us the Holy Spirit who is our teacher. Who is our counselor? Who is our guide? The Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach us into whole truth. And this is the entire truth, the word of God. We are blessed double, double. We have the word of God and the Holy Spirit to teach us to know God better. In Ezekiel 36, God has said that, that he will remove our heart of stone and he will put his spirit in us and the spirit will be able to teach us to obey the laws of God. At the moment, I have the Holy Spirit and I read the word. The Holy Spirit inscribes God's word in my heart with ink that cannot be rubbed. And wherever I am, the word is in me. 
The word becomes real. The word becomes life wherever I am. If our earthly fathers knows how to give good gifts to their sons or children, how much more will our heavenly father give us the Holy Spirit? With our eyes closed, you are there and you need the Holy Spirit Tell God, equip me with your Holy Spirit. The Lord, I thirst for your Spirit. I hunger for your Spirit. For those who thirst, God fills them. For those who hunger, God gives them whatever they desire. Almighty Father, King of Kings, we give you praise. For who you are. Excellent. Powerful. Mighty. And great. The God who has blessed us. With his. Word. The Lord has given us. The gift of the Holy Spirit. To know him. Better. And better. Father. Reveal yourself. To us. Release your presence in us. Father, be glorified by God in our lives. Father, I commit your servants to you. Bless their coming in and their going out. Bless their families. Bless their parents. Bless their siblings, Lord God. Father, equip them, Lord God, with wisdom with knowledge, with understanding, we give you praise for who you are. Father, our day is blessed. Our week is blessed. Our meals are blessed, Lord God, by you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we have prayed and believed. May I hear a loud amen. Amen. Go in peace.